Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Iron Squid. This Wednesday, we got a fresh group for you and fresh challenges between five glorious and fantastic contestants. My name is Total Biscuit. And I'm Dear Apollo. And I'm psyched, man. I'm psyched for every one of these groups. I'm particularly psyched for this one because what a lineup. Yes, we have a fantastic set of players here. I mean, every single group world champions are in there. Uh, we have MMA, Stefano, Jack G., Mana and Zenex Life, a fantastic set of players, and we really are here gonna see Stefano. I mean, everybody, you know, questions and argues and discusses Stefano against top tier foreigners, uh, and not top tier foreigners, so top tier Koreans and MMA and Jack G. Yeah, they're top tier guys. Yes. They are. And I'm interested to see Life as well, because like Symbol, he is one of those players that qualified. There were two qualifiers for Iron Squid. Qualifier 1 was won by Symbol, and Qualifier 2 was won by Life. And he did not have an easy bracket either. He ended up going up against some very unpleasant folks. Oh, absolutely. I remember him playing against uh, Bomber. He beat yep. Bomber 2-1. Uh, he beat Dreamer TT and then finally Keen in the grand finals, MVP Keen. So he actually had a significant, uh, amazing run through there. And a lot of good Terran players have fallen to live. And as we just pointed out, we have two fantastic Terran players within this group here as well. So maybe live is going to do what we saw symbol and, and scrape through. But of course, he has to keep in consideration Mana and also Stefano. Mm. Life's really, really crazy, actually. I recall him doing an all-kill of Rain, actually, in the IPL Team Arena Challenge. It was quite scary. And Xenix, this is Xenix's only representative in this tournament. Uh, it looks like it, yeah. I'm just looking across the groups, yeah. So there's a lot of hopes riding on the shoulders of life, and Xenix has had a rough time of it lately. They really have. Yeah, they, I mean, they're not one of the biggest teams, but they still do have a lot of decent talent within their ranks for sure. Um, all eyes are going to be on, though, Stefano and MMA within the two groups here. Of course, you do have MMA, an amazing, an amazing player. I yep. uh, did get a bit of an, uh, an ups uh, up surprising result at the Intel Three Masters, uh, a while back now when he lost against uh, Puma in the semifinals but yeah. aside from that MMA just been consistent and has won so many tournaments and is set and predicted to actually win this group here as well yes I mean looking at the state of the group there it is, but the there is the possibility that something gets thrown in his way and we may see that happen today since he's going to be going up against Jack Chi yes uh, he will be playing Jack Chi as our third game uh, the first game will be uh, a clash of European players, Stefano versus Mana, uh, rematch from ESWC, Assembly, uh, whichever online tournament you can pick. Yeah. Uh, and then second of all, we'll be going into MMA versus Zenex Life. We'll be able to see MMA's fast and fluid gameplay over uh, Zenex Life, who I actually haven't seen too many, just seen results, haven't really seen too much gameplay from him. Mm -hmm. So I am interested to see how he's going to take that game, as that will be a very tough uh, fight for him. Uh, and then, as you said, finally, MMA versus Jack G. Yeah, MMA versus Jack G. That will be a TBT for the ages. MMA's TBT is known as being very, very good, and that's to be expected when he is basically the shining light of Slayers in a team house filled with great Korean Terrans. But, as you mentioned, a while ago in the IEM, he slipped up against Puma. Yeah, he did. And he has weaknesses sometimes where people can exploit his play, such as Puma did. Uh, exploited the solidness of MMA's, um, you know, safe style and, you know, played aggressive in every single game. So we'll see what Jack G can do there. And all eyes are going to be on Mana as well. We can't, you know, you know, keep him away. Absolutely um, not. You know, 18 year old wonder kid, um, still in school, playing four hours a day compared to everyone else in the group who's a professional player playing multiple hours on end per day. Um, you know, he, maybe he won't be able to get through because of this. But still, he pulls up wins time after time, has known for having the best Protoss versus Terran in Europe. Um, so definitely going to be, you know, looking to kill Jack G in MMA here. But of course, has to go through Stefano, which is probably his most difficult task within this group. Yeah, we should never forget the fact that Stefano is in this group and Stefano continues to crush, crush, crush. And finally, we saw him overcome. There's a great rivalry developing between these two guys, honestly. In the Lone Star Clash, he overcomes Polt not once, but twice. 
in the he knocks him down to the lower bracket then knocks him out in the final and that was something that people were saying wasn't going to happen it's like hey Stefanos made his match Polt beat him in the assembly tournament convincingly it was a very close and thrilling series but Stefano was originally known in Europe for being the ZVT monster like unkillable by any Terran in Europe and he's now been more recently attributed with this style that crushes Protoss but we should never forget where he came from originally absolutely so he's going to be looking to pick off you know every Terran player here uh, and of course Manos so Stefano again one of the favorites here but can he compete with Code S champions here Th that is the question um, I don't know if he can maybe he can but at the same time Code S champion is a big feat. There's both of these guys have here. Jack Yam MMA. Stefano has one, of course. IPL3, ESWC, but not Code S, of course. So is he up there? That's the question that we don't you know, hardly ever get the opportunity to see. And within this group, as it develops through the next you know week or two, we'll be able to find out. Yes, we will. And that's why it's going to be a very, very exciting group. But speaking of exciting groups, the last group that we saw, Group B, had a sensational and shocking finale. If you missed it, then we've got a quick recap right here of what happened. It was thrilling. And this is what previously occurred on Iron Squid. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that, oh God, that group, that, I almost had a heart attack in those games. It was ridiculously tense, and what a result there for Symbol as well. Yeah, spectacular ending to Group B, um, but like like we are now ready for Stefano Mana, and yeah. oh boy, you know, Stefano just doesn't lose versus Protoss. He's lost like one best of three series in the entire of the year so far, you know, or maybe a couple more here and there, but to be honest, Stefano is so unbeatable in this matchup. He's the only Zerg player that has openly said, hey, I think Protoss is weak here. Um, it's really yeah. easy for me to win compared to every other Zerg player that says the exact opposite. Stefano's found a niche in the matchup and is abusing it every single time. And I'm sure we're going to be seeing it once again. He's got a 72% win rate against Protoss. Yeah, and I think he's got like a 99% win rate in 2012, so uh -huh. this guy is just so sick. He's so good. Ridiculous, quite frankly. Absolutely ridiculous. Can he take Mana out? Well, what is his history with Mana? Because if I recall correctly, it's not looking like this is favored for Mana at all. Yeah, online can, can vary a little bit and sometimes is 50-50, mostly favored though towards Stefano. But offline, there, there was the big... Uh, final in the ESWC where Stefano just destroyed Mana easily. Even Mana jokingly after after the post game um, interview said, "Hey, you know, I think Stefano actually just gave me a map, man, because I I just couldn't compete with him." And then, of course, in assembly again, we saw Stefano go up against Mana in a very easy 2-0. And if it continues like the trend has between these two guys, Stefano's going to walk over his opponent. 
Uh, Mana, on the other hand, though, does have the, the potential to be one of the best product players in the world. May not be right now, but I've been, you know, uh, hooting about Mana for a long time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he will eventually hit that big scale. It just, you know, his school holds him back. That's yeah, the biggest thing. Yeah, and you think that you know, what, with what he's able to accomplish now, considering he's barely playing as a result of school, think about what he'll be able to do when he can go full-time. That's, there's a lot of potential there with Mana, and this could be a nice group for him, honestly, because he does have two Terran players to go up against. Admittedly, they're not going to be easy. No, they're going to be very difficult for him, but he still has a good shot to take them out, even with four hours a day. Uh, one of the biggest things with Mana is, uh, if anybody looks at his results... Um, past the summer of 2011 towards the end or just before the end as he went back to school is that he won like almost everything and was almost in an unstoppable phase What because he wasn't at school it was his summer holidays uh, and then when he went back he started to drop off again mm -hmm. and just looking at that segment of his career alone says okay wow you know this guy is already beating pro players with the minimal time he's playing you know he can definitely do it when he goes full time and that's the question though because he's still not even sure he will go full time uh, and i think it'd be a real shame if he didn't take that opportunity yeah i think one of the biggest series that we saw at the start of this year actually which demonstrated the potential of mana in the protoss versus terran matchup was actually his ipl fight club showing against ganzi and he yeah. was able to take that one five four it was a really good run for him but what we need to focus on, I suppose, is what he's now going up against. Because this is his first game in this group and his first game in this tournament. And it's always good to get off to a flying start. If he can beat Stefano, who is a player that I think he's probably got some fairly serious hang-ups about. And he's not the only one either. You know, there are people that play Stefano. Grubby's another example of a Protoss that has just been completely tortured by Stefano over the course of the last few months. Yeah, he is. And Mano is, you know just like Grubby, just can't beat Stefano. And if he can beat Stefano here, if Mana can take this victory, um, then that's going to set him up so nice for the rest of the group. Having, Even though I say so nice because he's got two more Terran players to go through, um, Xenix life will still be difficult as well. Yeah, can't count that guy out. But Mana's PVT is definitely capable and is definitely Codest level to, to continue and push him through the rest of the group. But, you know, the first hurdle is always the hardest here. Yeah. And it is against Stefano. Uh, Stefano, on the other hand, is going to be going into this best of three series so confident, uh, you know, just listening to his country and Western music as he always does. And this is just going to be, uh, you know, in his own mind, an easy start to his group. I love the fact that you think it's country and Western. That's just so adorable. He's, he's into rock and roll, man. It's not country and Western. He's not going to know I've heard him actually listen to country really? and Western, man. That's why wow. I brought it up. Yeah. I suddenly think less of him, honestly. I can just imagine him in a straw hat having a hoot nanny in the Millennium House. I think it was because when he was in Texas, man. I oh, really think no. it was because of that. They've but... infected him. Uh, he's going to be square dancing with Tarson any minute. This is how it's going to go down. <laughs> Square dancing with Tarson in the Millennium House. I can see it happening. You know, having drunk with Tarson before, I can safely say that I think Tarson is the square dancing type. <laughs> yeah, that would be a dance off. Uh, I'm sure everybody would want to see, just like MC vs. Marine King Prime or something. Absolutely. Monetize your content, man. That, that's an idea for Millennium right there to get an additional revenue source. Dance off competition, Tarson versus Stefano. Do it. You know you want to get Bling involved in there as well. You know he's always oh, yeah, up for a laugh. About Bling. Yeah, after half a lager, he'll do pretty much anything. <laughs> oh man, you, oh, give Bling half a lager, guys, and try it yourself. Yeah, it's true, man. It's true. And as his official sponsor, I can safely say that I endorse that behavior. So just go for it. All right. Anyway, w w enough silliness. We need to get started on this. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado. Are you ready for the mighty Stefano versus Mana? I certainly hope so, because it's coming your way right about now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Daybreak, and what a great map to start us off in this fantastic series. And some familiar, familiar faces for both the players and, of course, us as the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mouseports Mana. He is in the green trunks and he is uh, playing Protoss to the northeast of Daybreak versus his opponent, Millennium Stefano. He is in his characteristic favorite pink trunks and he is playing Zerg to the southwest. Just the way Stefano speaks, if I was a player, I would be just... I don't know, it's so, it's like he's playing mind games with you. 
already. Yeah. Just the, the good look, have fun. Even the comma tickles me. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I don't know. It's just, I know what Stefano's like, and I know his, like, arrogancy, and I'm like, oh, you know. I hate it that you put that comma in between that good look and have fun. I don't wow. know. It just rubs me the wrong way, man. Because I know that he's saying it with a smile and he doesn't mean it. Because he knows he's going to win anyway. <laughs> my God. Either like, you're good in, luck. You're and incredibly have fun. paranoid or you're amazingly OCD that that comma actually bothers you right there. But, <laughs> oh, man. That's... But there have been players that have actually complained about that. And there's been drama in the past with Stefano's intros. I recall correctly, was it an assembly where he actually said um, GLHF boy to somebody? And obviously he didn't mean that as a racist term or whatever, but people freaked out about that, man. Yeah, I mean, Stefano, always the headliner. Um, and one of, the, one of the headlining overlords here actually is on the, the overlord that's on the right hand side. Look at its position that Stefano knows how to abuse this map. Mm -hmm. uh, that location where it's heading towards is undetectable without, an, uh, of course, any air or an observer. Yeah. Uh, therefore, he actually has free reign on the gases on the natural and can know everything you do just because of how if you take gas. Because if you don't, you have excess minerals. Therefore, you've thrown down a gateway or thrown down gateways or a third base. And if you do, you're teching up. Therefore, pressure is not incoming. And stuff. that's how Stefano reads this game, man. And that's what exactly he's going to be doing here. Man, I don't blame you for being paranoid about Stefano. He's like he sees everything. He knows all. He is big brother. And he is watching you. Uh, yeah, every time in this matchup, he, he, he does. And the thing is, he doesn't really care about scouting your main base because the... You're going to have gas there, you're going to have hidden stuff on the right-hand side. It's all about that natural, and he will yep. be idly watching. Um, we do see his traditional build here, uh, which is, of course, the four-minute triple base, uh, which he'll be going for momentarily here. Yep, he's setting up for that right about now. One and two go down, and against Forge Fast Expand, why not? And I shall ask you this, Apollo, and you will know the answer. What does Stefano absolutely without question want to deny the protoss player doing taking that third base exactly. um he doesn't care what what you do on two base you can you can rush the mothership he doesn't give a damn uh you can go colossus he doesn't care uh whatever you do on two base it will be a limited amount of units um unless it's you know a heavy heavy gateway pressure which he's already going to know it's coming and be able to hold it off um, so if you do try to take an early third base, he'll be all over it because he knows you only have X amount of force fills to hold on. Um, and the thing is that the difference between foreign and Korean Protoss players such as MC is sometimes force fields overlap. Uh, MC, for example, doesn't miss any force fields ever. Therefore, just because of that, it, it he theoretically has twice as many, many force, force fields as yeah. any other Protoss. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He's able to cover more ground. And other Protoss won't... Either they won't take the risk because the precision required is too high and one slip means Lings get it. Or, alternatively, they will make... They will just try to go for perfect force fields but end up overlapping them anyway because they don't have the skill necessary to actually nail those down. And yeah. it... Force fields have been the bane of Zerg for the longest time. You know, force fields shut down Lings hard. Force fields shut down Roaches hard. Force fields are incredibly important in the composition. And is Mana going to be able to utilize those force fields to actually deal with Stefano's usual style? Which, to be fair, is pretty damn brutal. He is known as the Wrecking Ball for a reason, because more often than not, he wins his matchup with Roaches. Yeah, he does. And he, Relentless Aggression too. Because he knows you have to take an expansion, and he'll, you know, throw down as, as much as it takes to break it down. Uh, which is where, of course, that nickname comes from. Um, we do see Zealot and Stalker taking both Zelnaga Towers, or at least the Stalker uh, killing the Lings that are trying to take it. Uh, and this is a, a good start here by Mana, and he is getting that plus one and sending out a pro behind this already. So I suppose we're going to see a bit of a plus one four gate little maneuver here. Yep, always a good idea to do, but we've got a Twilight Council Ooh. following this one up, so maybe not. He could be trying some sneaky trickery here. Let's see how much gas he's taken. He's on three gas at the moment. What do you reckon's coming out of this? Well, seeing the third base and Stefano, uh, third gas, sorry, and Stefano seeing that as well, it looks like it's going to be like a plus two blink attack. Um, he could go DTs, but that's the, the lesser option here, the two kind of big options he has. Um, Ooh, and I, feel, I have a feeling like it is going to be, so... Well, Stefano, the thing is, Stefano's overload spread is great. It did see the probe coming across, and even with that Stalker 
continuing to try and defend it, it looks like that probe is going to get chased away. So there's not going to be any placement there just yet. And that's going to make Stefano think, Ooh, well, why were you doing that? And then he'll start to define what's going on. And he knows about the gas. He knows about both gas. That's why this area here is so wonderful. Yeah, and now he knows about the gases. He knows that that eight-minute mark, he, this is all he needs, is that these 20 lings out. And Ooh, he actually nice gets surround. a surround on the Stalker, too. Yeah, amazing surround. And he Without knows that, speed. all right, I can drone up to 70, and you can't touch me because your attack, whatever it is, I don't care what it is, is not going to come until at least 9 minutes 30. Good luck, have fun, and rushes immediately up to 70 drones. And that's the difficult part, and which is what Stefano you know, preaches about within this matchup. One build to rule them all. Yeah, and the build he's going up against is going to be 8-gate blink plus 2. That is that is dangerous. It's the, can Stefano actually hold something that ridiculous? And I have to wonder if Mana's experience against Stefano is giving him this idea here. It's like, well, he thinks I can beat everything, so I'm just going to push it just one notch higher than usual. Yeah, and he's going to have, you know, a big surge of units here. Stefano is now, or should be, realizing, all right, he hasn't taken the third base. What exactly is he doing? May send in an overlord to try and find out, or can just wait for the composition to cross outside the, the Cybercore Gateway Forge and then see it anyway. Uh, but he's got 16 links in production. He's producing his army now. He has plus one attack on the way and roach speed too. Um, ideally, an infestation pit would be the best thing in the world right now, but he can do it with roach ling alone if he has enough. Yeah, and the question is, will he have enough? He has pushed up to uh, 66 drones and is not building anymore. He's adding on an extra queen, obviously, because he does have another base coming up. He's going to need that. We've got... Ugh, interesting. We've got a robo coming in. Could be for an observer just to uh, blink into the main. Could, of course, be to get immortals or indeed just to transition out of this into some kind of colossus pressure one way or the other. Mana is going to look for an engagement here and gets, he gets surrounded, but he's able to blink out of that quite rapidly and brings the supporting fire in from the back. But the risk is that he hasn't actually deployed enough stalkers here and it looks like he's actually going to get ripped to shreds if he's not careful. Ah, oh, the pylon wasn't ready, so he has to run away and Lings are making short work of this with zero zero upgrades. Look at that. Immediately shut down. This is eight gate blink plus two and he's had to run back to his natural already. Unbelievable, really. And it, it was pretty much done with just Lynx. Stefano's massively ahead in terms of army supply, 74 to 40. Plus three is on the way, and it will be for an immortal right now. He's just going to back that up and... Oh, Stalkers plus Immortal, ain't, that's fine. The problem is you can just you can just beat it with Lings. That's the problem with it. There's even a plus one upgrade coming in for Ling attack at the moment. And oh my, another force being engaged here. A better position here for Mana, looking to try and avoid getting surrounded. But Roach has come in from the side as well, forcing yet another blink backwards. And is he really going to engage here? The force fields are deployed, but the Lings did get in. And in fact, the Roach has got a good surface area attack as well. And yeah, there's only three sentries because he's devoted so much gas to the stalkers and this, you know, plus two and plus three attack on the way. And look at this. Stefano will now camp here and say, all right, come take your new base because I'm going to stop you. And I love the decision by Stefano to actually oh, hold that thought because once again, a bit of an engagement. Yeah, indeed. And the force wheels were pretty good, but he doesn't really have enough of them to stop the damage from coming in. The Immortal is the key thing here, and it's already smashing its way through seven roaches, eight. The Lings come in to try and reinforce this. This is a good hold here by Mana, but in reality, he's losing a lot of expensive units versus Roach and Ling. And Stefano's even going to get away with some of his units here, and supply count is looking ugly. Yeah, and the beautiful decision here by Stefano is to get the plus one melee attack instead of Roach, because he knows that Lings are the key to beating this, as long yeah. as he upgrades them. So uh, that's what he's focusing on doing here. He has the infestation pit finished and done with now. He can start pathogen glands and really shut this down. And, you know, Stefano, I mean, Mana can't even get outside of his base. You no, know, he can't leave. so one-sided to look at this fight. It really, really is. There's a fourth base up right here. He probably doesn't have enough drones here, but he thinks he can just win, and he's probably right, honestly. The Immortals are what's going to be able to break through the Roach camp, but there's only one up a second. In fact, no, he built an Observer. So, and plus three Stalkers are pretty damn good against Roaches, especially when they've only got plus one to back them up there, but it's just the sheer numbers that's the real problem yeah. here. And the Cyber Core is going to go down as well, which will actually prevent any more Stalkers and Sentries from even coming out. And this is why Stefano says publicly that this matchup is broken. Look at this. This is just so stupid. It's it's incredible to watch. In comes the Wrecking Ball, man. Straight into it. And blinking is going on, but there's, there are so many roaches. Another Cyber Core was built behind this to enable reinforcements. But the map is just streaming across. Mana should be able to hold against this, but at what cost, as we like to say. And rightfully so. 
Yeah, I mean, there's 67 drones. There's uh, Pathogen Glance just finished up now. Plus two melee is coming because he knows he that's how to beat uh, Stalker Immortal. Because there's no Colossus, there's very little Zealots in this combination. So uh, a little bit sloppy from Stefano to lose Overlords there. But mm -hmm. still, his, his new army that he's about to remax out with, basically, is going to crush through this. Yeah, it's looking pretty nasty, honestly. Plus two on the way, as you said. Looking to try and get a surround here. There are a lot of Stalkers with plus three, so Stefano's going to take a lot of losses here. He is trading inefficiently. He can't quite afford it. I, mean, he's, I don't think his drone count's really high enough for that, honestly, but he is on four bases and is building another eight drones, so he will start to get to the point where he's starting to saturate these bases and have this ridiculous economic lead. And more to the point, look who's running out of minerals. Yeah, mana is running out in his main and his natural, and Stefano knows he has to take a third base soon, so he's probably just going to go check, and here comes the denial of this third base, so the majority of action now is going to be down here, unless he runs into the main base, of course, with some lings, but look at this, it, mana can't stop it, he has no force fields. Well, yeah, exactly, and even that is just too much firepower, there's the cancellation on it, he runs right in, the wrecking ball of Stefano once again is thrown at his opponent, admittedly he is only doing this with roaches, so he's taking a lot of losses, just because he's going up against plus three stalkers, with roaches and those they have blink as well so mana will be able to defeat this one way or the other yeah wave after wave um a few like one drone was in that roach army there's another drone just idly at the top here mm -hmm. trying to join in stefano realizes there's a bit of a mistake there but he's now got ling and fest there the lings were about to be at 2-1 um uh, the stalkers are at 3-0 yes but against ling and infester they can't use blink now so that's nullified and lings with 2-1 upgrades is still very good against stalkers yeah and this is the trick isn't it really it's like Marlis, oh i've managed to defeat that army but there's another one on the way and he's been sitting so safe on these bases no harassment has come in whatsoever and oh, he even picks off the observer as well because hey why not might as well do that here he's still got a couple of fungals he gets a decent fungal the lings get right in there and and the plus two kicks in heavy damage being inflicted here on mana's army yeah and even though he is allowed to blink away from the from this fight he's doing a lot of damage but there's still there's four hatcheries here well five including a macro hatch he's gonna hive now as well consistent wave of units with a very solid economy pushes back mana once again he has warped in zealots now at the back and the base to kind of deal with this but he's still losing so much and there's going to be an Autos Cavern down soon. There's going to be Broodlords out. It's incredible. This is this is Stefano in a nutshell, isn't it? It really is. And look at the creep spread as well. Stefano already more than halfway across the map with it. He's got unbelievable mobility. He can pretty much spot anything coming at him. Mana hasn't even bothered to try and drop him because we've seen what happens when people try and drop Stefano as Protoss. It just doesn't work. Yeah, the, the nothing works in, in this case scenario, especially when you dedicate to, to eight gateways plus two blink. You don't have a robotics facility until late. You don't have any exit plan, and that's clearly been shown here. He doesn't have anything. No Colossus can come out. He doesn't have the money, and now the third base is going to be in trouble finally. Well, Warp Prism is coming down. He's going to try and drop, but I don't think that's even going to come out in time. There's already a big, scary force moving into the third. Mana's got to take this fight, and this defense has got to be impeccable. Otherwise, he's in a lot of trouble. The Zealots end up getting caught out. Wow, so many Infested Terrans, actually. Using Infested Terrans as force fields, and with that amount of firepower, he can't stand there. He cannot. Those Infested Terrans will rip him to shreds. Down goes the third, and reinforcements stream in as Mana plummets below. 90 supply, 80 now. Oh, Oh, it's a massacre and there's the gg oh yeah. watching stefano play against protoss makes me glad that i am not protoss yeah it's it's very very difficult and this is what stefano that's why he doesn't lose that's why i mean yeah sure he loses a game here and there but overall it doesn't matter like the the graph of that shows consistent winning against protoss and somebody needs to do something about it but that's not going to happen in this tournament which, to be honest, is pretty good um, because that means Stefano maybe isn't imbalanced anymore because there's only four Protoss overall. We've already lost one and we could be losing another one, especially if Mana doesn't pick up from here. Um, so at the end of the day, Stefano is going to have to show his skill elsewhere. But Jesus, man, this is just sickening to watch. It really, really is. And a good start for Stefano, certainly taking the first map. Mana's not out of it yet. He's got a ch chance, but when... <sighs> God, it, where do you see a possible? Where do you see a hole in the defenses of Stefano? Where do you attack? How do you do damage to him? 
That's that's the questions, man, that every single Protoss player asks them daily when they run yep. into uh, Stefano. Um, the thing is, it's very difficult because if you sit back and try to play more defensive, then he'll overrun your third base no matter what. Um, and, you know, maybe there's some way you can expand, maybe using the, the build that Genius used against Don Ray Goo in the Code S finals where yep. you use Void Rays and Force Fields and Phoenix to hold on to a third base. But any form of attack... He knows exactly the drone to the very drone that he can get away with and still hold on. Um, he's just so well refined in this matchup that it's unbeatable, and, and that's really thanks to Bling, um, who's you know obviously improved himself, but tightened up Stefano's timings and is looking incredibly strong. Yeah, Bling's played a lot of matches against Stefano. They ha he has been in the Millennium House quite a bit, and he, hell, he was apparently even observing that game there. So there you go. He is. He leaves the game, and unfortunately for Mana, takes his first loss there. And this could be a quick 2-0 if it goes anything like this again. We'll find out after this break, folks. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Iron Squid and Mouse Sports Mana, who is in the green trunks playing Protoss to the east of the Terminus versus his opponent, Millennium Stefano, who's taken a commanding 1-0 lead in this series. He is uh, playing Zerg in the pink trunks to the west. And if this is going to be, um, you know, a comeback series here from Mana, this is the map that it's going to happen on. Um, because that third base we talked about, it's now accessible for Mana. There's just the debris there, there's no entrance this time around. So, the, the problem is, yeah, good. Let's say you do establish a third base against Stefano. Now you're going to have to face up his Broodlord Infestor combination late game, which again, Stefano has it refined. Therefore, of course... Um, it's going to be very difficult for Mana, but we'll see what he could do late game is this should naturally be a later on style of game. Yeah, you would think so, wouldn't you? But uh, Mana in this matchup is interesting in terms of like how passive he is. And he went for this really aggressive style against Stefano because he knows he can't play like a passive three base plus game. Whereas... The, the most memorable series was quite some time ago now. It was at a previous assembly where it was him versus Demarga in the finals. And he, there was these big, long games, huge games, four or five bases each at least. And Mana knows that Stefano isn't going to allow that to happen. But it's Terminus. And this version of the Terminus happens to be... It, we're just going to be honest. You will have noticed this anyway. You're not dumb. You've seen that this version of the Terminus has no back rocks and actually has the destructible debris on the base itself. Yeah, um, a little bit of inconsistency there, but whatever. Um, the thing is, though, that Mana is going to love it. <laughs> He's going to really, yeah. really love it. And I hope to see some epic mothership play and everything in this game. It really does have the potential to be in the way that it's set out, cross positions as well. Um, Stefano is going to have a tougher time taking his third base here, of course, because the, there's nothing, he, he can't, he has to build links early. Um, mm -hmm. So that four minute third base is not going to happen. It's going to have to be like, you know, five, six minutes. So that's actually going to hurt him a lot more uh, and obviously going to help out Mana a lot. So this is shaping up to really push uh, Mana towards a comeback. Yeah, it is. Forge fast expand into the Nexus right there. And I have to wonder if this alters the strategy of Stefano in any respect. Because, as you said, he really is one build to rule them all. But you can't do that on all maps. That's just the nature of StarCraft. You can't just do the same build on all maps and expect to get away with it and expect it to be, more to the point, equally as effective. Does Stefano alter his tactics here? Um, I think he'll just delay it by, you know, that one minute or so, one to two minutes, because he's got eight links now, he's going to stop working on them, he'll throw an additional queen down. Uh, what you can do is what we've seen Liquid Ret do, throw a macro hatch next to it and just be like, all right, whatever, I'll just, you know, destroy it and then get a real one after. Yeah. Um, but I think the way that he's going to play, he's still going to play Gasless, I feel, uh, and just get it once the Destructible Brewery's gone down. Yeah, he's working on it with a good number of links here, seven in total. So they will start to break it down. As I say, it'll probably take about an extra minute to uh, get that rolling. It'll give him, in the meantime, a chance to get his queens out, and he's even building an extra one initially, which will be nice, because then he can start his creep spread as well. Join those bases up, which is not difficult at all, but more to the point, start pushing out so he can gain that creep dominance that we saw in the first game. Absolutely. Um, what's Mana doing? Double gas now. Uh, pretty standard so far. I guess he'll... After the Zealot, probably go for Stalker. I'm interested to see if he gets this plus one, because he hasn't done it yet from the Forge. Um, it's... Okay, there it is. Never mind. Okay, so it is down. I was going to say, that's really weird if he isn't. Maybe double Stargate, but no. The yeah. plus one's down, which is completely normal. Zealot moving out too, and 
Stefano, as you said, creep spread is going to be very important here too because he really does need... It's it's a very tight map, therefore anything that happens on three bases stays on three bases. But if he spreads out around to the fourth bases and so on, that's when movement is going to be so important for Stefano to get position on mana. Mm, very true. And um, Stefano now has started that creep spread going and we've just got nothing but drones coming out for the moment. There's no reason to really build anything else. Eight links does give him a reasonable amount of map control, even though he doesn't have speed. He at least has control of that Zelnagatar. He spots the Zealot, is able to get out of there nice and easy. Now, Mana is going to start working on those rocks eventually, but he's going to poke out with the Stalker first. Yeah, he does. Uh, and this is a little bit scary. Uh, just in case of like, if he lost a stalker to slowlings before, he has to be so careful with his control not to ha let that happen yeah. again. Mm -hmm. um, we do have the third gas going down here for mana, um, so he's, he's opening up his options a little bit. And once again, Stefano sees the gases, but this time it's for a robotics facility, um, and that seems like it may be for a warp prism early on. Of course, you don't want to go for Colossus too early; uh, doesn't make that much sense. But warp prism with a couple of sentries could uh, work out. Possibly find some holes in areas where Stefano's weak. Uh, and he can pick off drones. A good idea, considering as well, Stefano's going for this very frontal defense here. He uh, has only links, just like, right, oh, well, early game pressure. I'm, I'm going to need spines in order to actually deal with this and continues to push his uh, creep forward. So at least he's got that maneuverability advantage. Mana still not working on those rocks at the moment. And it will most likely be that War Prism attack, but I don't know, man. I've seen Stefano play against War Prism before, and he just doesn't care. Yeah, he's very good against it. He spreads units amazingly, can can easily defend on multiple fronts, and uh, an Observer's coming out first. We'll see if it is followed by the Warp Prism or not. Um, and he is also working now on that third base, and he's going to be so happy to play this map and this version, because like I said, this third base is such a difficult thing to take when you play against Stefano. He yeah. will not allow you to do it easily, and he's going to be able to do it uh, first of all here. And Oh, Robotics Bay coming down here Unexpected. for mana. I wonder if that's for Warp Prism speed or not. I guess we'll find out, because yeah. there's the warp prison. Yeah, it could be. Uh, it's it's interesting that he would dedicate so much gas so early on to that kind of tech. I mean, it does allow him, of course, to build Colossus later on, but as you said, of course, at this stage, not necessarily all that useful. I wonder what he's got in mind here. Yeah, we'll have to find out when it completes, whether it be for the Warp Prison speed or just for Thermal Lance and straight into Colossus from here, uh, as he can be greedy. You know, he can just build Colossus at a very early rate here. Uh, the Warp Prison's finished, and we'll Grab some warp prisms, okay. I mean, grab some sentries. Uh, Yo, dog. On, turn around. I heard you like warp Yo. prism. Yo, turn around. He's, where's he going? Where's he going? Where's he going? He's, He's at the top left, but he hasn't got any sentries in it, so okay. I guess he doesn't want to use them. So he can use just uh, zealots, I suppose. I mean, he can warp in whatever he chooses to use. He's actually uh, but there's using the colossus. colossus as well. Yeah. Yeah, colossus coming out, and thermalites will probably follow shortly. But third base is on its way now for mana. But I'm interested why he didn't use sentries. What is he going to deploy here instead? I have to assume they'll just warp Zelotin. The thing is, it's going to be spot. <laughs> like, it's like, uh, and he wiggles just a little bit there. It's like, oh, no. It's happened again. I've managed to run over that. And, yeah, it's going to be Zealots. I mean, that, I guess that's the best choice that he can. He, ca he certainly can't afford to warp in more sentries when he's building Colossus on two base. So that's not going to happen. Double Spire coming out right here from Stefano. Ooh, I love that choice. Uh, and I'll go into that very shortly. Um, so the Warp Prism is going in now with Zealots, but it's been picked up. <laughs> Look, the Lings will not allow anything to happen here. And that's a waste of 600 minerals right there in the air. And unfortunately, he got spotted at the top. Yes, it did. So you ain't getting in there anytime soon, I am afraid. Locked down nice and easy. Warp Prism now drops and brings the Zealots into their death very, very easily. Stefano rips, well, he rips through them, but a quick pickup comes in from the Warp Prism at least. They desperately tried to jump on the Warp Prism, but that doesn't work, I'm afraid. So with this double spire now, of course he's going to dedicate to Mutalisks um, mm -hmm. kind of heavily. Yeah. Uh, this is actually a very nice choice here, uh, especially knowing that the Warp Prism is out, and that's when he decided to build it, because he knows the, f the most probable follow-up is going to be Colossus. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously not High Templar, that's not Archons, that's not Storm. Therefore, Mutalisks are going to be able to do a lot of damage. He's Excuse me, saved a lot of gas because he didn't build Roaches early on as well. Um, the thing is, what Stefano needs to do with the, the Mulis now is not just damage, but as you can see, double expanding in the bottom right. If he can establish four and five base gases, the gas income will be like 1,300 minerals, uh, 1,300 gas, sorry. Mm -hmm. And he can continue to upgrade double. He can continue to make like 45 Mutalisks by the, you know, before the 20 minute mark, like the 18 minute mark. And that's sick, and without storms or anything like that, it's unstoppable. 
So we actually do see the Templar Archives coming down upon scouting the Mulus with the Observer, but there's still a lot of time before anything actually comes out that can push this back efficiently. Yeah, and this has been a problem for Protoss for quite some time to the point where Blizzard has said, we're going to give you a unit in Heart of the Swarm that deals with this, and unfortunately it ain't Heart of the Swarm yet. They've got to do something about that. Stefano moves in, takes a little bit of damage here from the Stalkers on the ground, but Stalker is not enough to beat Muters once you get to a certain degree. Once you have enough of them, you're just not going to stop it. Interestingly enough, we actually have two Warp Prisms out on the field at the moment. Oh, really? I didn't even see that myself. Yeah, double um, Warp Prism. Okay, so with speed 2 now, um, that's actually pretty interesting because Warp Prism is like the fastest thing in the world now um, yeah. with this. One at the top, and it's actually going to deny this base here. The Mutalists are trying to go there, but at the same time, the Warp Prism can get away. Uh, this is an interesting strategy here, and he's going to use one in the south side too. Unfortunately, oh. the hatchery doesn't go down. No, it does not. So that's nice. And yeah, the south side warp prism is down here. Keeping track of these warp prisms is going to be a damn nightmare and a half, I can tell you that. And the mutas are possibly going to pick that up, actually. Warp prism needs yeah. to get out there immediately. Uh, but it is it is fast enough. It can get away now with the speed. And here comes the drop down to the bottom. Now, this is curious. As I say, I've never seen this done against Stefano before. Maybe, just maybe, this is kind of a hero style here, actually. Yeah, it is. That's exactly what it is. Uh, the, oh my god, the hatchery. Ah! It, oh, god! It yeah, it sucks. Re it really does. Holy hell. I mean, if, if those were plus three, then that would have been already dead. But yeah, that really does. Uh, that strategy actually fails now as a result of that, really. Uh, but he gets the pickup on the top hatchery. Oh, He's a single zealot in the south. A single oh. zealot. Oh, hero zealot. Where the hell did that come from? Good lord. Four prism. It oh. uh, keeps going, man. The, the Warp Prism's like got ten, well, point ten faster speed. I think it's Warp yeah. Prism is three three eight, and the Mulesk is like two eight, I think, or one yeah. eight. Movement. Yeah. Oh, seven five. So something along those lines, yeah. And Mana can actually get away, but he's got to be very, very careful about being caught out. And Stefano doesn't find it. And this is interesting. This really is. This is shutting down Stefano's style quite effectively here for the moment. For the moment, that that is true. It's the operative uh, word, but it's I think. good. It is. That's you know. That's what Stefan is trying to do here. Because with the gas, he can go hive. He can go two two mirrorless now. Uh, can easily transition into ultras, into broodlords or whatever from here. Uh, whatever he really does choose. So broodlord would be the most, uh, you know, the most sensible transition. But I'm a little bit worried for mana. At the same time here is he's he is defending, but he needs to think long term, such as fourth base, uh, as his main is almost mined out now. He needs to start thinking about that. And we do have the Stargate coming down, of course, for the Mothership, and also the Dark Shrine to continue to harass bases with these Warp Prisms. Yeah. Uh, did you see how many Spore Crawlers ended up going down? Funnily enough, not at this base. Oh, no, there is one. Never mind. And a wall of Spine Crawlers. He built a huge number because he knows, well, okay, you've got double Warp Prism. I can't really stop it. Harassment is going to happen. Mana with Zealots on the ground here to deny that expansion over there. But we are still... It's five bases versus three still. So... Stefano, while he is having problems with these drops, has 94 drones. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of spine crawlers uh, going down soon. He doesn't need that many drones, yep. but we already have a bunch of spine crawlers at the south, but he can mm -hmm. easily take the middle. But double expanding again at the north side, just taking the entire of the map. There's nothing to stop him. And with the, you know more bases that come down, he's going to go into the four-digit gas income where things get pretty scary. Mana, though, still just building up. He's on 200 supply now, though, so he definitely wants to start to move out shortly. Mm -hmm. The Fleet Beacon to prepare and the DT Shrine for potential harassment warpings after that now being completed and also an option of Archon later on. But his force composition really doesn't suit that. He's pretty much Stalker at the moment, as you would if you're going up against a large force of mutas there. What he doesn't have... Well, actually, no, he has five Templars, so he does have some possibilities there, but he's still got to be very careful and indeed has only sent out a very small force, which is most likely going to be torn to shreds here. Yeah, I think he actually wants to get rid of the supply here. Yeah, you um, might be right. The thing is, though, that's what Stefano needs to do soon, too, is that Mealus are good, they're good, they're good, they're good, and then they're bad at the later stages. Because a couple of storms, everything's gone. Um, he's going to have the mothership, so he can vortex, he can cut it down. DT's actually deployed at the north side, uh, picking off these two expansions. Yep. Uh, really nice play there by Mana. But I'm interested to see what Stefano's going to do with these Mealus, if he'll keep them. Because if he does keep them, that means no Broodlords. So... He has to do something and make choices soon. 
Yep, this warp prism might get in a ping of mana. It needs to get out of there quicker than that, and he loses a warp prism. And you know, I guess it was only a matter of time before that happened. So there's only now one warp prism on the field, and this harassment potential has been lessened quite significantly. But this one's having fun. It's playing stabby stabby against these infestors, but it has now been picked up quite nicely. The expansion comes to back that up, and. The loss of that harassment potential at the top has allowed free expansions from Stefano, and that would be eight bases versus three, which yeah. is, that's getting beyond a joke now. Yeah, the the gas now is finally in the four digits where it becomes soul sick. They can, Kazoo can do anything now. It doesn't matter, he can do anything. And he's building seven corruptors, so he's going to go in with his mutilus now, and this is just to clear them out, I think, more than anything. Do as much damage as possible, but clear the numbers down so he can build the Broodlords. Yeah, why not? And... He's just going to smash his way through. Do, he does a lot of damage. I mean, there's still plus two, plus two. They don't die all that quickly. And he uh, draws those units out of position and is able to do just little bits of damage here and there. There are very few areas of the map that Stefano doesn't have. He's already over halfway across Terminus. I just want to point this out. This is Terminus. It's freaking big. He's over halfway across there. And... Wow, it looks like Mana's actually going to try and take a fourth base versus the nine bases of Stefano. This is grim. There's a DT at the north that has a mutual agreement with Stefano not to do damage at that base. <laughs> Apparently. It's like, all right, well, I guess I'll just let it save. But it's a traitor. Mulisks finally yep. going down uh, on stormed, that natural. Yeah. Uh, but that's fine. That's what that's what Stefano wants here. And he's doing damage to the probes, of course, which is great. And damage actually on the third base as well here. So yep. killing a bunch of probes. Have a look. He's killed 35 probes. He's done a 23. Done 23. Unbelievable. That's sick. And he, he really wants to get rid of these mutilists. So it's like win-win. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He doesn't need them at all. And now this force is going to move out. And, well, Stefano's got as much money oh, as no. he puts. He's recalling. He okay, actually good. recalled to the main because he was taking too much damage from those mutilisks. There goes the recall from the mothership. That also means there's no Vortex for a while. Yeah, this is really, really bad. And he would have lost every single Stalker in the center there once you get trapped by Infestors and swine crawlers. And he's like, yeah. ah, now he hasn't got a Vortex. Uh, now five Broodlords are coming. Uh -oh. So, pretty full transition now. Still 178 supply. I suppose he can make a few more Broodlords and Corruptors and get back up there. But yep. this is getting scary, man. I mean, now Stefano's sank so much gas all over the place. And he still is going to have... He's still. Oh my god, he's, he was touching 1,500 gas income. Yeah. Which is like the highest you can get, really. Yeah, it's just... It's absurd. It really is. He has so many bases right now. And, oh, the DT finally has broken its agreement and has decided to turn traitor and is able to eliminate one of the 5,000 bases that Stefano is currently sitting on. The one base that wasn't defended by anything, but there are spine crawlers and spores going down at all of the others, so that DT isn't going to get much of a look in. Stefano has massive air superiority. He's got a lot of corruptors as well, so that mothership will last about two seconds. <laughs> Thermal has been researched. I don't know what happened along the, that oh, line because it's uh, uh. not there. Uh, but yeah. he doesn't have any Archons either, so this is going to be pretty bad for Mana. How how does he kill the Broodlords? What's he going to do, exactly? I, I that Storm, I guess, but... Good luck with that. <laughs> it's just, yeah. uh, especially bearing in mind that he's being ripped apart there already. The Infestors get feedback there by Mana quite nicely. A good Storm goes underneath it, but Broodlords are so durable, it's really difficult to deal with that. And the Templar are protected at the moment by those Stalkers, but so much damage is being inflicted by Stefano, and he's he can remax so many times. He's banked 3,000 minerals. He's got so much gas income. He doesn't have a problem eliminating that. And Mana's got barely any income to speak of. His economy was smashed. Yeah, the income tells a bunch of stories. I mean, 1,500 minerals, 1,400 gas, and then 600 to 600 for mana. It's less... Oh my god, it's less than half. That's so sick. And <sighs> Stefano's going to keep on making this army, and it's never going to stop, especially now he has the north bases. Yeah. You play passive against Stefano, this happens. Yeah, it's as simple as that. You play aggressive against Stefano, the previous game happens. It's depressing to watch as a Protoss, really. It, how the hell do you beat it? Well, unfortunately, this base is now about to be under some grim siege, and uh, Mana's going to go in. He lands some solid storms, but Broodlords really just do not care that much. He uh, retreats just very slightly. A blink comes in, nicely played there by Mana to pick off one, two Broodlords going for it right now, but there are so many units, and the Infestors at the back are dealing a ton of damage here as well. Even a spine crawler is being deployed into the middle of the fight. It's actually even got to get up, if you can believe that. Invest the Terranex coming down as well, and Mana's army falls to pieces. Yeah, and 12 Infestors in the production tab compared to a Mothership and two Stalkers. Ah. And seven Corruptors now, plus two attack. You know, it never ends. It never ends. 
and Stefano is going to take out this fourth base of mana and without that base he doesn't have any income and he will not be able to sustain the army necessary to actually beat down Stefano at all. No, and uh, Stefano slacking a bit there, letting some Broodlords actually die. He can easily reinforce him. He's building 23 more drones because, hey, why? Why is he building 23 more drones? I don't know. Maybe he just wants to build spine crawlers in the fourth of mana. And those probes just say, I don't want to live anymore. This is torture. I'm just going to throw my life away. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> God. I think the drones are actually because he doesn't he's got so much gas income that he he's actually eight hundred oh my god, eighteen hundred gas what? and then only eleven hundred minerals. So what? he's actually like oh I actually need to get minerals because I don't look at his supply at the top right and he doesn't have any minerals, so he builds yeah. twenty drones to actually saturate a mining base. And you know, that should be the other way around, but it's yeah. not. It's Stefano. Ugh Stefano is terrifying. This fourth base has been, you know, I honestly think this is an act of mercy here by Stefano, just to let that live. A hundred drones and a massive army and loads of ability to reinforce. And as you said, his income is now rising to ludicrous levels. You see that mineral count? 2,000 gas income? Are you kidding yeah, me? That's, uh, so that's what Mana says as well. GG. It's like, there's no point. Oh. Yeah. He has every base on the map. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, almost, yeah. It's... That's nuts. That is nuts. You shouldn't be able to do that, but Stefano, he's got no problem with it. It's just <sighs> like, I can do it. How do you yeah. beat that? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Moment. Nobody knows how to beat Stefano. Apparently, the only people that do know is going to be MC and maybe a couple of others in Korean, but aside mm -hmm. from that, nobody knows. It was domination, honestly. The double warp prism trick was a good idea. On Terminus, it's a shame it wasn't another map other than Terminus. Maybe if it wasn't Terminus, that would have worked a bit better because there's just there's so many expansions to try and cover and to continue to harass. And the answer to that war prism is eventually just, all right, okay, I'm just going to build a bunch of spine crawlers so you can't kill me. It's as simple yeah. as that. And then what you've got to do, of course, is try and exploit maybe a, a hole, a timing where he's building a lot of spine crawlers and his army's not as big as it should be. But with an economy like that, he can do both. And that's the terrifying thing about it. It's so sickening to watch Stefano play. And he makes Mana, who is a fantastic Prowess player, look like nothing in that game. And, and well, I'm, I'm glad looking at the next few games that we're not seeing Stefano because it is getting to the point where I'm feeling nauseous about that <laughs> matchup. But we are going to oh. have MMA versus Life, which of course is going to be a Terran versus Zerg instead, guys. So you guys can also get off the roller coaster like me. And uh, just go back to a normal, normal balance matchup. Exactly. You know, I'm just going to go up and throw up in the corner after watching that. And we'll be right back with MMA versus life right here on Iron Squid.